Friends, colleagues and listeners, quick announcement, a live face-to-face -face conference at long last. 5th to the 7th of September, it's going to be at the Grand Hyatt in Athens, and I'm talking about the Air Cargo Handling Logistics Conference, which also has Air Freight Pharma in association with Cool Chain, AGS, Airline Ground Services, in association with ASA, ASA Leadership Forum, and on top of that, we've got ULD Care. Des Fatanis is going to be the chairman, myself and Stan Rafe, co-moderators, hard talk, direct questions, great panel, great speakers, please join us, and all details are shown below in the link. Colleagues and listeners, here we are again, back for a session or episode two of the series with Matthew Vaughan from IATA. And just again, just to let you know who the good looking young man is on the screen, um, it's Matthew Vaughan, who's the Director of Aviation Security and Cyber. Fantastic title. And um, we're speaking to him in Ottawa, and um, he's actually based in Geneva. Matthew, session two, episode two. This is the one I'm really interested in because it, it, it's something that, you know, when you first seen all these science fiction films and you're reading books and you're, you're thinking, how can somebody do that? How can they know that? And I've got, I've got, what's it, Alexa. And mm. I tell you what, do you know something? I'm 30, I'm, I'm, I've been married for so long and I've argued with Alexa more than my missus. <laughs> and the, way the, the way the damn thing just comes on and then all of a sudden I get emails with things. I just think this is crazy. Yeah. Anyhow. Yeah. But that's the uh, that's that, that that's the bit in the side about me. So this one now, cybersecurity, not if but when related to hacking, and also the Internet of Safety and Security things. And for me, the biggest shock in the world that I I, I get and I get on a regular basis. And I was I was having a session yesterday with um, with Sunny Segal from Tran mm. uh, Transmitech. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So we were having a we were having a session and a workshop with some other other people from various. Um, consultancies and everybody was still so shocked at the amount of information Sonny was able to give us mm, you know? mm. and the way he put it into into context yeah. and the terminology the characters and I know yeah. we, we've spoken earlier about you know bad actors and mm. and and all different sorts of um, you know who's doing what and who can do what I mean it's it's frightening but just recently now, you know, and, and in our industry as well, we've had a couple of major hacks, you know. Mm, mm. And what I find interesting is the way organisations report those hacks mm, mm. or report the, that, you know, what's happened. And they're in a very difficult situation as to what they can say, what they say, what impact it has, mm, and also, mm. you know, to what degree they have to acknowledge the impact that it's made on the business because mm. that in itself just stimulates more focus from what, I mean, from what we're speaking about, bad actors, not so much state actors, but bad actors at the moment. Mm. It's, uh, yeah. it's, it's worrying times, huh? Yeah, look, it's, it's, a, it's a really important um, topic. Um, we're obviously just going to try and cover it in, in 20, 25 minutes, but um I, th I think it's you know the first step is is to talk about it and and to your point around Sunny talk about it in terms that we can we can really understand. I don't think we need to get into the detail of you know security controls like air gap sy systems, for example, right? Yes, yes. We yes. Um, just yesterday the Five Eyes Intelligence Community just released a global alert on ransomware. Yep, and. Uh, no doubt that we've got various hostilities in parts of the world um, that, that are achieving a lot of public attention at the moment. Uh, and there are state level capabilities, both defense and offense, both digital and physical that are, that are in play. Um, and I, I think that's a different conversation to what, what we want to talk about today with um, in terms of our own sort of organizations and, you know, sector based um, cybersecurity. But but it's important to note that if you've got, you know, the highest intelligence cooperation um, alliance in the world publicly putting it out there that 
these sectors, you know, education, health, energy, and so on. Um, aviation wasn't one of them. So I'm, uh, you know, kind of, you know, that, that's okay. I mean, they, they were just kind of mentioning a basket of, um, of sectors. Uh, and as we know, this phenomena is not aviation specific, right? It's, it's literally open to anyone that is, that is online and has valuable things, assets connected to that, that online. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, sh you think, should be aware of this. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that list, Matthew, you know, that list was aimed at major, major disruptors. Yes. Uh, then you've got a different list, which would be more at the, you know, how to get, how to get finance or how to get payments from those. Correct. So you, you've got all these different sectors, but, um, but, but the thing, the thing for me is, and you're talking about Sunny, Sunny put, the overview, and we use the whiteboard as well, into mm. such simple mm. terminology mm. that no matter what level of involvement or, or experience people had, it, it was could. so transparent at the end yeah. how yeah. and why you have to look at things in a different way. Yeah. And he yeah. started by saying, I think he said something like, it's a little bit like death. It's going to happen to all of us at some point. Yeah. And, yeah. and then when you take that into consideration, if you start feeling unwell, mm. you, need to, you need to address it quickly. And if there's something going around, you need to protect yourself. And it's the mm. same with these with, the, with these particular elements of, of business. It's not about when it's going to happen. It's has it happened? How yeah. quickly are you aware that it's happened? And in many cases, what capability do you have to know that something is about mm. to happen or maybe mm. has happened? And then what mechanisms of protection do you have for all of your information and, more importantly, information about others or information that could disrupt your own your own business. And there's, there's one more there's one more tense in there. Is it happening? Yes. Because yes. the really good versions, they don't leave a lot of forensic information in in the network or the data set or the the application that was breached. So so you're not going to know that. So the the emphasis is really on having the tools and the the culture within your organization that is able to monitor, survey, whatever whatever adjective you want to use to describe that, uh, so that you can at least pick up an anomaly. Yep. Don't worry about whether it's an attack. Pick up an anomaly from what is you know deviating from normal um, sort of network performance within within your system. Yeah, and and it's funny, Matthew, how how you know some of the terminology. So we're talking about bad actors state actors, ethical hackers, and then we talk about cyber hygiene. And, and, you know, after just coming out of COVID, when the emphasis is on clean, you know, clean your hands, <laughs> put your masks on, do all this. Yeah, it's yeah. the same. It's the same with the, the system, isn't it? you know, turn it off, yeah. change your passwords, make sure yeah. that remote access is secured, all the things that you put into place to stop that pandemic from spreading. You're you're absolutely right. The, there are behaviors, as we, as we mentioned in the previous um, session, there are behaviors that we can all do. And, you know, one of the most basic is, of course, when your device tells you that there is a, a patch update or a system update, um, it, you know, it's probably not a bad idea to, to go ahead and, and, and do that. The, the other sort of nuanced or aggravating circumstance to this is is I mentioned it before is, is around the achieving the the privacy can piece that that's attached to cyber, and the other one which is a real soft, um, you know, has a real soft underestimated component at the moment, and that is the the influence operation that cyber actually um, you know sort of commits to to psychologically changing the way that we want to live. And conduct our, our daily lives, right? And uh, you know, we we saw Facebook. Um, you know, yep, it's being yep. renamed, right? It's 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 gone through. It hasn't gone through a cyber attack in the traditional sense that we're talking about it, but it's it's had it's had to adjust its its cyber hygiene, if you like, to in order to to achieve. And it's it's obviously renamed itself, but in order to achieve the the notion that it's it's not part of this influence operation that that we see in in many jurisdictions with many systems at the moment one of my favorite if i could just give you an example is you know if you log into a banking system and you might see an image that pops up and 
it's the system checking whether you're a robot, right? Yeah. yeah. And that that's a cybersecurity measure. But guess who is running the pitches, right? That is, that is the Google machine learning um, background. And it's using us as humans to help it train and identify those images, right? Yeah. Had yeah. Chimneys and tractors the other day, right? And so, yeah. so that- traffic, traffic lights and- Traffic yeah. lights. So that, that is a cyber measure that we have all accepted but is also helping big, big companies, you know, big conglomerates, trustworthy in this case, right? So, you know, no, no need to, to raise anxiety around that, but we are contributing to that data set and the growth of that machine learning that, that's attached to it. And that could be a, a session for another day is, you know, where do we see machine learning? Um, 100%, in 100%. Yeah. And, yeah. and what you're talking about there, like, like I said, the, the, end, the end result, of yesterday's session for me was how to teach people, everybody, mm. some some basics. Yeah. A to yeah. make them a to make them feel that they can contribute to a conversation at a dinner party or yep. or whatever, and and B so that they're aware of certain basics and help protect their own home systems, you know, their family systems, whatever it is, and then eventually yeah. work systems. But to start becoming more more capable in in contributing to the defenses yeah. and that that simplicity mm. it's something that's necessary and the simplicity of reason because as we said on the previous episode certain people who get into that that segment and have it knowledge and are very clever clever people god bless them all yeah um, in some cases they're clever but they're not as in-depth yeah. uh, capable as so many others and you you mm. alluded to the fact that there's a shortage as well in in real good yeah. for smes so you know the simplicity of the message i think is so important from everybody Here, here's a really good example you know five ten years ago we're talking about passwords we all know what a password is yeah today it needs to be pass sentences the word is no longer strong enough yeah so you know to to your point start using phrases and sentences that increase the amount of characters that are available in your password field yeah and and you are you are doing the 101 in defending um on your own on your own style your own accord you are defending um that particular system from you know really basic uh password hacking yeah i'll tell you i'll tell you another threat to this and, and, and I think somebody's got to come up with it, is so many people either put the same password for everything, yeah. Yeah. which, in my opinion, is not the best. Yep. And then you've got the other side, where then you've got to have multiple passwords for so many things, and it's yep. so difficult to remember them. So they end up writing those down, and some of them put them on their own system. Yep. So you've got another problem in itself. So you know somebody needs to come up with something to help Miss, Mr. or Mrs. Or, 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 or any individual person, how yeah. to protect themselves properly. Yeah, look, I mean, we're, we're getting into the, the detail on sort of that retail level. But for example, you know, your, your Wi-Fi at home, yeah. um, that router, you know, that you buy off the shelf, uh, it has basic security features within it. But if your Wi-Fi password is a pass sentence, you you achieve a, a level of security that that most hacking capabilities um, are, are not going to be able to breach in the time that you you are using that particular that particular system. A really good example is, of course, the the cryptography associated with 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 Bitcoin and and some of those those currencies. Right, you know they they say that ninety percent of Bitcoin has actually been mined, or in other words, cracked. And the remaining 10%, those, those computation capabilities, technology-wise, they won't exist for another 100 years. So it's the, same, it's the same methodology. The more characters you can put into your past sentence, the less opportunity there are for existing technologies in our lifetime to be able to, to break that. Yeah. And that, that's just that's just software level stuff. We haven't even got into firmware or hardware or anything like that. Yeah, no, it's a little bit like a joke that I heard while I was away in South Africa. I won't tell it now or I won't say what it was about, but the difference <laughs> was one person 
one person was entering the gates of heaven was given a choice and they had to spell a word from history or geography and the word was the country Spain. So he went S-P-A-I-N and then somebody else that he knew very well was coming up to heaven and he looked down and then the statement was, you know, we lived together for so long on earth and now we've got for the end of eternity together to do everything we've already done. And he started thinking to himself, do I really want this? And then he, he was the one who was in charge of the, of the quiz and he said, spell Czechoslovakia. <laughs> so it's a similar, it's a similar sort of issue. <laughs> but um, coming back to that now and, and just a few questions, Matthew, I'm going to, I'm going to pump a few questions at you, five or six, yep. which I think are really important. Um, so, yeah, you know, organisations, should organisations be looking and ensuring that they've got cyber insurance? And if they do and they have, what the cyber insurance constitute? What, what, what actually do they get for it? So I would say uh, if we kind of bring that back into, you know, an aviation logistics realm, uh, there are there is underwriting for cyber protection, specifically for some of those higher order assets like aircraft operations and, yeah. and so on. Um, the difficulty is not so much the insurance piece, but how do you then achieve that level of service from your from your subcontractors, from your supply chain, right? And yeah. there was a there was a major breach last year in in the U.S. Uh, and it, I just use the word breach. There's no data stolen. There was no yeah. data modified. It was just breach, right? Yeah. And um, you know massive part of the, the aviation supply chain affected or made aware of, of the particular breach. And, you know, uh, my organization uh, also. But do you think that those affected organizations through their existing service level agreements could actually get to test access and see their own um, and determine their own, uh, from a forensic point of view, their, their own um, exposure to that particular breach? Of course not, because the service level agreements in place did not did not cover those particular pr provisions. So, a yeah. little bit like ground damage with with a ground handler, right? You can you can have all the liability you like to protect protect your airframe. The ground handler is gonna you're gonna pay for that, right? Yeah. It, it's yeah. not gonna be a thousand dollars turnaround or or whatever it is, right? It, yeah, it's yeah, no, no, gonna exactly. be a lot higher. So, so I think at where it's heading is that. Um, specifically with the warnings that you've got now with, with um, you know, government-based warnings around ransomware, it's, it's probably, at least just in my personal view, it, insurance is, yeah, it's absolutely fundamental. It's part of it. But the, the real um, sort of focus area at the moment need, needs to be on your suppliers and, and the supply chain and, and how, that, um, how you're able to work together on, again, identifying the breach and how you how you work to close close those gaps thereafter exactly no no exactly that's uh, and and you know it's never as simple as it seems no so course, now another one okay like um if companies have a, a a cyber response plan when they are hit you know and it should include some sort of comms and, and end game activity etc from stakeholders how many actually have such a, a platform or a system that's quite effective, and uh, you know makes that makes that initial difference to alert everybody inside and outside, um, you know of what's happened. So it, the sort of intellectual lazy way to answer that is it's got to be depending on on the kind of breach, right? The kind the kind of attack. So, yeah, yeah. but now that I've got that out of the way, I can tell you exactly um, exactly uh, the the way the way that that should be done. I. I would say for regulated operators or regulated sectors and industries such as aviation, um, there's still some way to go to, to get to that level of practice yeah. in the same way that we experience today when we have um, you know, a, a basic physical security breach or, a, or an aircraft um, incident or, or accident, right? The, the same yeah. way that we have those. Yeah, that doesn't exist today in clear black and white in, in terms of um, organizational digital base, base type breaches. The, the other piece that makes that, that more complicated and I can, I can see it in your eyes, I know this question is coming, is the kind of um, motivations at, at the point that you can understand it 
what are the motivations of the particular attack at that at that point in time and and um that's where it does start to to really become isolated and organization specific yeah or potential potential reason for it so that you've got a better understanding exactly yeah rather than rather than looking at it from when you're under under attack and under pressure correct and, and what you said there matthew is about how often is it practiced and tested uh, i'm sorry and sad to say lots of recent audits and visits and health checks i've done you know you've got people who've got fantastic erp mm -hmm. um, process and controls but it's all paper yeah. and tick then when you actually find out on the ground, how often has it been done? Has it been practiced? Are people aware of it? I mean, sadly, it's it's not happening at all. Yeah, that, that's a, I'd say that's a fair, fair observation. Um, the scale of digitalization in the last, you know, 18 months, two years has meant that, you know, basic test environments and sort of user testing interfacing um, to, to a degree that, that, you know, funding and political will is there. Uh, you see a lot of applications going straight into production, right? So, and then they're kind of missing that that old school step of of that that testing environment. So, uh, but again, having said that, the the industrial control um, type systems, you know, the SCADIA systems that we know today, um, and you know, aviation air, aircraft and air traffic control, they're no different. They have some very good security by design principles from years of engineering practice. Yeah, right? yeah. And, yeah. and so it's, and, and that's both the firmware and the hardware uh, associated with that. But the, the, um, the increased amount of, of data demand and the, um, the bandwidth that is now available, you know, through yeah. satellite technology, that's, that's becoming almost retail, right? You know, in, in the way that, um, was it was it Telsa that just just launched a, a whole bunch of you know Wi-Fi satellites right for for the world yeah, yeah, and yeah, they've yeah, got yeah. they've got lost in some lunar storm but I'm yeah. sure they'll get get them back but um, they're going to need traffic lights up there soon yeah they'll have they'll have traffic lights and you know space junk collection and all yeah. all kinds of stuff but the the point I'm trying to make is the the strength of connectivity. The data demands, the um, the machine learning component that comes with it, yeah, there are inherent vulnerabilities attached to all of that uh, that can be successfully managed. Um, but the you know to to get back on point in terms of an organization, awareness is just fundamental, top down, and that's no different to any safety security management system that highly regulated sectors um, operate within today. Yeah. No, no, I agree. Now, another thing that always, uh, it just niggles me is like we spoke earlier about insurance and can you get insurance and for what insurance? Mm. Now, if I was, if I was uh, issuing insurance for a company, I'd want certain criteria, which they do. Mm. So when we were just using ERP as an example or, 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 you know, fire and assembly points and things like that, how often had it been exercised? I would make that a prerequisite of the insurance premium. Mm. And if that wasn't being practiced, then I would do spot checks and I'd want evidence of certain criteria that I felt, whether it was from artificial intelligence, whether it was from data, whether it's from whatever, that were the fundamental reasons as to why things happened. Mm -hmm. I would want evidence from those companies mm -hmm. to say not only were they in place, not only were they being talked about and in manuals, but they were being practiced and they were lived by as part of the culture. And I think from COVID, an awful lot of organizations have realized that their worst case scenario management and risk assessment and awareness of hazards and repercussions was not addressed in the manner in which it should have done. Yeah. 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 The, you could, you could argue that the, the business continuity posture of organizations adapted really well, right. Yeah. You know, we, we had BCP plans and um, transitioned, transitioned rather well. And business survival. Yeah, ex exactly, and and we're doing that today, right? But the the, um, the the culture piece that you're talking about in in making sure that you are proactive leaning as opposed to you know the reactive, yeah, that's I would say that that's no different in cyber as as it is for for a range of other hazards that that you manage that you need to manage. Yeah, no, no, no. But like I said, I I just don't think there's enough there's enough on that, and I know I know I ought to. I, I've been very 
I've been very critical of, of IOSA audits mm. and the mm. focus people put on it and the fact that organizations almost insist on getting a zero find in IOSA yeah. as if that's as if that's something to pat themselves on the show. Well, mm. for me it's not. Mm. Because the amount of effort that goes into making sure there's zero findings is effort that isn't put into place in everyday work in management life. And then the credibility of it goes out the window. And I think people should be encouraged to almost welcome mm. Mm. a medical, which is what it should be. And the more medicals you have, the more likely that you either have peace of mind or you find things out early. And it's that early understanding mm. and awareness, you know, or that early threat intelligence that's the most important. Yeah, I think to, to your point around the IOS, or it it um, it's obviously a program that's currently going through some reform and and looking at at the risk based component. So it's trying to evolve with with sort of modern you know modern situation of the industry. But the most important thing to take away from something like IOS or is the internal audit component, right? It's the it's the internal performance management, um, which you know in a previous organization. Uh, we were subject to that that quite often, right? And and yeah, oh my God, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you were able to game some of it, right? And and to your point, right, you're you're able to to work with it because you adapt and you learn. Uh, but so did that that internal quality assurance and the way that they were able to to oversee certain parts of of the process or the the implementation. So cyber is no different right and um you know phishing for example and and the sort of testing emails that we receive and you know the ability to identify a, a fraudulent url and and you know not click that and give away your password and things like exactly. that exactly yeah yeah no 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 it's so important and then another question another question is like you know for companies how do they how do they assess and realize that they've got they've got a correct level of threat intelligence you know, mm, or, mm. you know, to what degree? And it's a little bit like someone saying, yeah, yeah, I've got insurance. But when you check the small print, the insurance is very basic. Mm, and God forbid, mm. had you been aware of that, you'd have done things differently. So yeah, you know, companies, uh, you know, gauging the level of threat intelligence. I mean, that's crucial, Matthew, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. The, um, you know, other other sectors outside of aviation logistics, they they rely on what they call information sharing um coordination center you know isacs yeah uh, there's a financial one there's an automotive um we've obviously got an, an aviation one uh but but again if you're a regulated entity um you the government is your first point of call right and yeah. and yeah. and if you are regulated that infers that you're part of a pretty mature um structure in in the way that national regulations are you know authorizing operators endorsing operators um and if that is the case then i you know there'll definitely be an, an ecosystem where that kind of information uh can be shared and, and accessed and 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 solicited so in terms of iata's role we we obviously have our our governance groups in place our, our working groups um and it, and it's cyber is no different we do that in safety security and a whole bunch of other other components um for 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 airlines yeah yep no good good um right we've come to the end of the second session and i'm just going to leave with one point for you to ponder on before we go into the third and maybe we have a discussion offline but um you know i'd like to know how long it'll be before matthew vaughan director of of, of aviation <laughs> security and cyber before you actually head up your own sort of iata swat support team you know to provide specialist service to people that have you know been affected and can get onto you really quickly to also verify that they're doing the right thing in their recovery but yeah that's a, for another day for, for definitely for another day but um I'll, I'll absolutely take note of it all right right great and um look forward to episode three and thank you again and um, we'll be speaking shortly <laughs>